Hey guys, um, I wanted to do a real special video today um, because we get this question a lot in our Facebook groups and on the mealwormsfarming.org uh, website a lot, um, and we never really see any videos about this. Uh, today's topic is going to be about the dreaded grain mites. Now, grain mites are tiny, tiny white specks, look like dust or frass a little bit. Um, but if you look carefully, you'll see them starting to slowly, slowly crawl up and out of your bins. Um, this is a very rarely talked about uh, discussion topic because it's kind of embarrassing to mealworm farmers. If they have grain mites, it makes them maybe look as if they aren't taking care of their farm or aren't following the proper directions. Um, and I wanna tell you that I've been doing this for two years straight um, never had a single grain mite issue, even when I kept my temperatures well above 80, even to the 90s a lot of times, and my humidity is into the 70s generally, usually, since I'm here in Florida, and still have never had grain mites. Um, but it happens. It happens to every farmer at least once, um, and sometimes you just get a bad bag, or you put your uh, bran in the freezer or your oven, and it just isn't enough. Um, and so you're stuck with this issue. So um, I wanted to show you today how to get rid of them. Um, I've been working on my grain mite issue for the past probably month, month and a half now. Um, and at one point I had mites in every single one of these containers because they were all from the same bag of wheat bran, I believe. Um, and I've gotten rid of them in all of them except for two. There's this one here and there's one um, down there that still is loaded with grain mites. Um, but I've successfully removed them from all of them and I wanted to show you how and that's what we're doing for today. Um, there are a variety of tricks that you can use. Uh, the one I'm using is to prevent them from spreading and to get rid of the ones that are in here at, that I can see. Like all of these grain, grain mites I'm about to get rid of real quickly um, with a neat little process that I'm using. And I'm also preventing them from spreading outside of the tray as much as possible. Um, it's not easy. It, it's not something that you can do once and set and forget. This is a daily uh, issue that you've got to deal with. Um, if even possible, more than once a day would be best. Um, but here are some of the tools that I've been using. Um, I am preventing them from getting out of the tray by lining the tops of the trays with petroleum jelly. Now, I was going to go out to the store, but the wife was like, oh, no, we've got the stuff for our son who doesn't need it anymore. Just a uh, healing ointment, real expensive stuff, but it works because it's mainly um, petroleum jelly. There we go. So that's what you need. So either... Um, just a big tub of petroleum jelly from Walmart or anything else that contains petroleum in it. Um, the idea is that you line the tray and the mites stick to it and can't get past it. And it kills them and you prevent them from spreading. Another popular item is to spread the top with oil. Um, the only issue with this is it kind of dries out over time and you have to apply this often. This petroleum I've applied once and it's been working this whole time. This would be like a day or every other day type of application, um, but I'll show you how to apply that in just a moment. And to clean all of the mites that I see, like I don't have any jelly here in this space right here, I'm just gonna wipe it clean with a wet rag. Um, I'm happy, uh, happen just to be using these. I don't know if this is going to um, be the end of my farm because I'm using something with chemicals in it, um, but I take real good care not to even touch the rags with my substrate. Um, so, and so for the most part, for the past month and a two or two that I've been doing this, um, I haven't noticed any de difference or dead worms or anything like that. So I, I just got some uh, generic brand disinfecting wipes from Home Depot. It comes in a, a case of two for like six bucks, cheapest I can find. Uh, I'm sure they make... Um, less chemical versions, if like for baby wipes, that type of stuff. 
um, but these have been working just great. So the first thing I want to do is clear the line of mites that I see. So I'm just kind of left with the petroleum jelly line. Um, and to do that, I just take one of these rags and I'm going to fold it small. I want to fold it small so that the rag and the juices, whatever, don't get into the substrate. So I just fold it in half, fold it in half, fold it in half, till it's about this size. Okay. And I usually use this side to clean half, like a width and a length all the way down. Um, and then I'll flip it over and clean the other half. Um, and then I'll flip it over again some more and clean some more just to make it all done. So watch how fun this is. Let me put my camera. There we go. And you can see all of the dead mite material here. It's delicious, doesn't it? And I usually stand over the trash can while I flip this over in case any pieces fall off. And I spin the tray. I'm going to go back and get all of those other parts that I've missed. Um, I'm just switching to a clean side every now and then. That way it's easier to clean. So I have that one little strip to do. So now what you'll see is a tiny little, a little bit of uh, mites that are still alive. You can tell it because they're white. Um, stuck to the jelly up here. So I usually take a clean side and kind of just moisten that line of mites. I'm getting a lot on my rag, but I'm also killing them by drowning them with this moist towelette. The only problem with this strategy is when I wipe the petroleum jelly the jelly gets all gunky and um, messed up a little bit. So I will show you how to replace the jelly with clean jelly. I'm gonna flip it to a clean side and still just do one more pass around. Nice and clean bottom. All those mites are gone and in the trash. What's left is a really gunky brown sludge of petroleum jelly all the way around. Um, and so I'll, I'll use this bin since it probably needs it a little bit um, and show you how to remove this um, and reapply some more ones. I have just a regular paper napkin if I were to smear this, it would just literally smear the petroleum jelly around um, and I'd be cleaning it for days. So I found using um, either like a putty knife would work. I just happen to have this knife with me in here. Um, and I use the, the top edge of it because it's nice and smooth and strong and it allows me to scrape up the jelly. So let me get the camera just right. I usually do it this side here. So I have all the jelly right there. And I'm just going to scrape it up. Filming and working at the same time is not super easy, but hopefully you're getting this. Several passes. I'm getting as much solid material as I can. Mmm, doesn't that look nice? Yay. And then I take my towel and just simply wipe it off like a good booger. And I repeat on the other sides. So again, there's my knife. Clean the blade off. Go another round. The 
jelly that I just, just scraped off from the very top is nice and clean. That lets me know that the mites aren't getting through it, which is a good thing. And the jelly at the bottom is going to be a lot darker and filled with dead brown mites. I don't know if you can see the difference between an edge, a side that I cleaned, and a side that still needs to be cleaned. But it's getting there. If you don't reapply the petroleum often enough or have a thick enough swath of petroleum, uh, the mites are going to crawl over their dead brothers and sisters that are stuck in the jelly from previous days and crawl right over your line of petroleum jelly and escape your tray. So it's real important that, and I'll show you when we do this, that we put at least an inch of height for our petroleum line. So it's a nice wide moat of jelly that they had to cross um, and we put it on pretty liberally as well that way it's thick and coats everywhere if you have a single gap they will find it and they will spread it's their job to do that all right so for the most part i've cleaned all four sides it's not really that clean i just scraped off the thick material so now I'm gonna take one of my wipes again. And now that most of the material is away, I can scrub it and get the jelly off. Whatever residue might still be there. See, there's some there, but if I keep on cleaning it, it will come up. side is nice and clean now no jelly on it at all and I repeat for the rest of these sides you need to flip your wipes often because the jelly will coat them and then just smear the better you do with the knife the easier this part will be so take your time on the knife if you need to do a whole second pass these wipes are cheap, but they're not free. So far I've gone through about four or five of these things with a hundred, no, 75 wipes in each one. So, not fun. Keep flipping it over. See, new sides that have not been used before. couple bins that I've seen where the mites do escape a little bit. Um, I can tell because they crawl up along the edge here and then they crawl up and under and down the side. Um, so if you see that and you're wiping your bins make sure to wipe the top edge and the sides and even the bottoms because they just crawl over the whole thing. My bin might be ready. Okay, so let's step back and take a look at this thing. Nice and clean all around. Um, especially if you compare it to the beginning. If you want to rewind and go back to the beginning of the video to see how messy it was. It's nice and clean now. This is all the gunk. Just going to throw that away. It's still a little bit wet, so I'm just going to take a new napkin. 
just dry it before I apply the new Vaseline so it adheres better to the tray. I'm wearing gloves, which is really, really helpful when applying the Vaseline because I can just do it with my fingers and not worry about this stuff getting all over my actual fingers. I just take a finger worth at a time. Let's see if I can get the camera good. I kind of just start in the corner and I want as much of this space here to be free so it's easy to wipe and kill as many mites as possible. So I'm gonna put this Vaseline at the very top edge that I can. I grab these from the very, very, very top, the um, horizontal surface though. So I try not to cover this with Vaseline. I just do the top of the vertical edge. Your trays obviously might be different, but that's my reasoning for not covering the very top horizontal surface. I'm gonna apply this and then I'll Turn it so you can see what it looks like from a different angle. That was two pretty big fingers full of Vaseline. I cover that entire edge. You can see it's thicker on this side. So we're gonna go back over here and just go over it one more time with the excess material I have on my fingers. Just remember it's like a firewall for the for the mites to prevent them from getting out. Another finger of Vaseline. As you can see I let it go about one knuckle worth of my middle finger, which is about an inch. When I first noticed the mites, they were coming out of four of my baby egg trays. Um, and so those were the only four that I had quarantined with Vaseline at the time, um, thinking it was just something in the eggs. Um, Cause again, all of my beetles are in these trays. So I thought maybe mites got into those beetles. Um, and then for a little while, I thought it was the um, chicken feed, the crumbles that I use, um, because I think there might have been a bag that I didn't freeze. I was just in a rush to get something fed to them. I didn't want to have to wait a few days for it to finish freezing in my freezer. Um, so that might have been it. I'm still unsure at this point, um, because every single one of my bags of wheat bran I stick in my freezer um, for at least a few days. Um, some people believe that baking is more safe than freezing to prevent mites, and that might be the case. Um, I don't bake because I tried it once and it stunk up my entire house, and I love my wife too much um, to have that happen again. So I freeze mine, and again, two years of freezing without an issue um, I've either been super lucky or I just got unlucky this one time with these mites. Um, but it's a good learning opportunity for me and maybe for you if you have the same issue because now you know how to handle it. All right, so I've got, my fingers are clean finally, yay. I've got my entire perimeter lined with Vaseline. I've wiped down the inside. Uh, wiping down is helpful because it lets me know if they're still coming out or not. Um, there's some that I wiped down yesterday and I, when I check them today, I'm not gonna see any. So lets me know that the mites are gone from that one. But as you can see in this bit, a lot of, oh, I can't even talk, in this bottom corner, we have mites coming up again. So they're definitely still live in here. Um, I have my vacuum to suck up all of the sheddings, but I'm not going to do that because I'm sure there's mites on the sheddings as well. 
Um, if I did vacuum them up, I would make sure to throw the shuttings away in the trash. Um, that might actually be a faster way to get rid of some of the mites. Um, but for now, if I vacuumed it up, the shuttings would mix with other shuttings and I've been saving them. So I don't want to do that. Um, what else? Oh, let me show you the olive oil method. Put this one away. This one goes in here. And we got a nice healthy tray of worms mixed with beetles. Um, recently I've been letting pupa just stay in the bins, um, mainly because of the mite issue. I didn't want to sift and get mites in my bucket system. So I've kind of just been leaving all my buckets abandoned for the past few weeks, um, as much as I can, adding bran as, as needed. Um, these guys need a little bit of bran. Um, but as you can see, there's no mites in here. But I want to show you the oil method anyway, um, because in case you can't get your hands on Vaseline, the oil method is just as effective as cre uh, creating a barrier for mites. It's a little bit messier from my experience because it's, you know, oil and liquid, uh, but it works. So um, I've done this actually two different ways. I've tried to be clean, which is the way I'm going to show you this time and put it on the napkin. Other times I've just doused my glove and just wiped it by hand um, because I was in a hurry or wanted to try something new. This is getting on my hands anyway, so I might as well just be fast about it, right? Careful, careful, it will spill out. I try to smush it around as much as possible so it absorbs a little bit. I don't want it to drip. And then you just line the insides like you're wiping them, but instead you're applying a thin coat of oil. Okay, this is not as effective as the petroleum, but it still, it still helps. Another trick I've utilized, I'll put this away to show you, is I have put a cup, some people say dog food, but I just, I don't have dog foods because I don't have a dog. I put chick starter in here, the crumbles, and I added oil to it. Kind of mixed it up and the mites are attracted to that. They climb up and in and then drown themselves in the, um, in the chick starter, in the oil. You can see the worms also are drawn to it. So they kind of come off a little bit or they eat it. I actually, um, for my bigger worms, I wasn't uh, paying attention and they had chewed a hole through the bottom of the cup. And I came out one day and the whole cup was filled filled with worms. So they really do like the oil, uh, but I had to throw those worms out because I don't know how healthy it is to feed worms oil. As you can see, I don't have my infestation, but I do have a lot of older Vaseline that I need to scrape off today because it's getting gunky. Um, so this is more evidence. This was absolutely contaminated with mites at one point. In fact, I think this was one of my first bins because it has a cup in it. Um, and you can see they're all gone just after um, a few weeks of doing the same method with wiping and coating with Vaseline. I believe this is my second coat of Vaseline. That's all it took was two applications. Um, but yeah, I definitely need to clean that today. Um, once I clean that off, I'm going to dump this into a brand new bin and then scrub this entire bin because there's some, um, let me get the camera, there's some crusty stuff down here. Um, I just want to clean and scrub that so they have a nice clean bin. Um, so that'll probably happen later today as well. Just get a garden hose and a kitchen scrubber, maybe some Dawn. Um, just scrub it all clean. Uh, let's see if I can find another cup. Okay, this is a cup from another container. I want to show you this because you can actually see the line of dead mites on the inside. There we go, you can see it better now. So proof that this method does collect uh, some mites. So that's why I keep the cup in the center. 
So the mites on the perimeter will go on the, on the edge and I'll clean them off that way. And any mites in the center of your tray, if there are any, will get cut with this method. They just climb up the outside and run on in. Oh, get a little bit of, hard to see it, but right to the bottom too. That's interesting. All right, so that's this tray. See no mites in there anymore. They're all cleaned up. Again, for the most part, I'm mite free with the exception of two bins. I've purged all of my beetles um, and those are in two new, um, this one down here, egg trays, that one, and this one up here. So I'm going to be watching these to see if um, my mite issue is still a problem. I noticed them in the egg trays and only the egg trays really at first um, and it took a while because I must have added new brand to the beetles and then the eggs took a little while to hatch each time I added the brand. Um, so when I did get new infestations, it was like a new tray or two of eggs um, each week that would, that would pop up. So these are my, I just took these out of my beetles yesterday, this, this, this bin and this bin up here. And so far I don't have any mites coming out. But I've been monitoring. I don't even have um, Vaseline on them because they might not be a problem. They might not need it. I still wipe them every day just so the dust of my brand when I sift or move around the shed so that doesn't make me think that there's mites. That's about it. That might be it. Oh, my next thing I'm going to do today is I've been working on this table for the past month or so, cleaning up mites. Um, there probably is a good chance that some of the mites might have fallen off the bin or crawled off the bin onto my table and crawled maybe under the table, down, or maybe even crawled out of bins and onto the wood and from the wood spread all over the wood or down on the floor. Um, this floor is dusty from just wheat bran and frass being used in here often. I'm sure those of you with farms know what I'm talking about. Uh, so today, when I'm done with this, I'm also planning to um, mop everything that I can so that I have a nice clean floor um, so I don't have an infestation of mites on my floor. Because if I did, I would never know. I would It would be impossible to see it. Um, and I might even have it and I just don't know, but hopefully a mop will kill it. Um, if my worms ever fall to the floor, you can see one here. Um, I usually step on it to kill it because I don't ever pick anything from the floor and put it into my bins anyway. Um, but I just don't want the mite spreading all over the rest of the shed. Uh, so that's my plan today. I'm just going to do a deep clean, clean my lid, clean the sides of all my containers. Um, whatever I can. Um, and then when I'm done, I'm going to put it all in the trash and make sure the trash goes out. So I'm trying to keep it all sanitary. Uh, I don't want them crawling out of the trash and back into everything. Um, I've done that already with these rainbow bins. I washed them all last weekend and they're nice and clean. I did that to these white trays over here. I just washed those out. Um, they're so missing because I'm currently washing them out here. They're actually sun drying at the moment. Um, but yeah. It's a lengthy process and as you are going you just need to keep on cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. Before I started this bin, uh, this video, I scrubbed the table so any work that I was doing wasn't going to spread even further today. So clean as you go. If you use sifting pans make sure to clean those often. Um, that's another preventative method to prevent mites. Clean, clean, clean. All right, I think that's it for today. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments and all that fun stuff. And um, yeah, bye.
Thank you.